I found something that I've never found before and you can see it over there. Gold plated, wow. Look at that guys. <laughs> Good morning. We're back with another metal detecting World War II Battlegrounds adventure. And today I am with my buddy Iron Mike Metal Detecting. Go and check out his channel. I'm really happy that we were able to meet up again. We just started off detecting and I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a major dugout right here. We think it's a position for a German uh, flock artillery, but uh, I think we are about to find that out because like right next to where we just set up our equipment. Let's see what that is. Today's video is sponsored by War Planet Online. Before we get into the video, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about a game I discovered recently. War Planet Online is a free to download military real-time MMO strategy game set on a real world map. It's available on mobile and PC, so you can truly play anywhere. Terminator 2 took over War Planet Online for an exclusive action-packed experience full of missions and rewards. Play with and against players from all over the world, fight merciless Terminators and stop Judgment Day. Build and defend your base, create an unbeatable army and help the resistance in the war against the machines and save the world. Craft numerous futuristic weapons and skills that would personalize your strategy against Skynet and all enemies. Join Sarah Connor as your tactical advisor in thrilling PvP and PvE daily challenges. Make sure to click my link in the video description, install War Planet online and log into the game between October 19th and November 1st. 10 of you can win an official jaw-dropping T-800 Terminator school box merchandise. So big thank you to War Planet Online for the sponsorship. Let's get back to the video. Well, that first signal was right over there in the back and uh, it wasn't too much. But actually on the other side of this dugout, I had another high signal. And uh, that one is quite clear. And I already spotted what it was. Let me just get it out of the hole. That is a rifle round and um, it's a German one, unfired. And there we go, we can clearly read that code still. 37, 1937. I haven't gone that far from the bags yet. I'm still digging in these uh, dugouts. And actually I found some leather parts on the surface here. They do look really old. They do look like World War II leather parts. Um, some scrap metal came out and right here, I found something interesting. Forgive me the exact English name, but this was a tool that you could use to uh, basically ease your foot into your boot. Um, and it's it's in half. I think this, this should have been longer. It should have been a big part here. I cleaned this a little bit and look at this. There is some writing on there. You can already make that out a little bit. I think it's German writing. So this could be military, but I've never found this before. So. And the next signal to come up is this very heavy iron object. And I think it's a howitzer transport plug. Uh, and actually Mike also found one of these just now. So maybe we are on something here. And I just found another one of those transport plugs. And, uh, and we found quite a lot of them already. We have a spot right here where we've collected all of this stuff there so it's stacking up and uh we'll see if we can find more i found these two two little relics and i think they are lead seals and i'm not sure what they would seal maybe uh, ammunition boxes or those ammo uh, canisters i mean we have found some ammo packaging material so if there were canisters here maybe they were sealed with uh, with these seals we're still stacking up the uh, grenade packaging material see some stuff right there and uh, Mike actually just discovered some more packaging material. Are you ready for another one? We have another one? Yeah. <laughs> Look how deep that is. And it's complete too. Oh my god, man. Look at that. Hey, we'll we... just brush it off for you. Yeah. Well, see. We already found one of these, or Mike found one of these 10 minutes ago. So we know there is writing on there, American writing. 
and uh, I think this one actually still has paint on it. Look oh, at this. Oh wow, this is this one. This also original has... green paint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that condition. That's awesome. Yeah, this is a good. oxalic acid, then, then it, it's going to be like new. I can promise you that. You can already see the paint, and oxalic acid is really great in preserving paint even further. Wow, man. Can you turn it around? Yeah, let's, let's brush that part off a bit. And I think there's more. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can already also see that paint here. I mean, the sun is shining nicely on it now. Wow, man. And what does it say, actually? Don't use wrench, okay? Use no wrench. Use no wrench. Yeah. The caps were used to close off 155 millimeter howitzer shell storage cases. Yes, yeah, more. Most definitely. And I think there's even more than one. And right next to where Mike is digging up all of that grenade packaging material, I just found an American 50 caliber casing. A lot of American stuff here, apparently. We definitely seem to have found an American artillery spot. I wasn't expecting that, but a really nice surprise for sure. Well, it didn't stay with just one 50 caliber casing. Look at this, guys. The result of maybe half an hour of detecting. And the funny thing is, I think all of them are from uh, Des Moines and uh, from 1943. I just called Mike over because I was digging out a very high pitched signal over here and I recognized a shape. I don't know if you recognize it, but I believe that this is a German tent pack. So let's see if we can dig this out live. That's there we go, guys. Look at that. German aluminum tent pack. Yeah, I must say I found them in varying conditions. Sometimes the aluminum is really rotten. But then again, it can also be really nice still. That's usually where the markings are in the head. So what was your signal again? Because you uh, were digging... 50 caliber uh, casing. <laughs> That's a really interesting <laughs> find next to this German tent pack. Well, I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. No. Certainly good. Nice one, guys. Yeah. Let me just give you a small summary of all of the finds that we did here. Yeah, we found loads of these uh, transport plugs. Also many of these uh, covers for, uh, for grenade canisters carry it. This could be a detonator ring for a grenade, found some fabric and wait 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 there's much more here. Look at that. A lot of those covers again they're all marked they're really nice some of them even work they still twist and turn and many of these 50 caliber casings. So yeah all US stuff we definitely hit a US artillery position right here. And uh, yeah, it was very cool to uh, excavate this site. Do you want to learn more about how we restore World War II artifacts? Make sure to check out our Patreon. We are a couple of weeks further. I said goodbye to my buddy Iron Mike and I'm currently on the road with my buddy Rob from World War II Unknown. He invited me to join him to a very special location that he discovered a while back. And uh, we're gonna check that out. We have our metal detectors with us. See you at the location. Quite thick forest as you can see, but we have good hopes for this location. There should have been a lot of American activity here, actually. We're going to give it our best shot. It's quite a funny moment here just now. My buddy Rob is somewhere over there in the back. And he just found his first coin of the day. And believe it or not, I also found a coin right next to him. And look at that one. It's really pretty still. Uh, it's an aluminum coin. It's a French coin, actually. Look at that. It says 1944. So that's the right time frame. Interesting how this coin ended up here. We're not in France, so uh, some soldiers brought this with them, and uh, in some way it ended up here. Belgium coin this time. Oh, that is a nice one. They're made from zinc, so you are lucky with that condition. Mm -hmm. And the other one you found? Yeah, look at that. 1942. Oh, it's the same one as I found, but yours is two years e uh, older. Really nice. And this Belgium coin. Yeah, cool. Got a 88 signal right here. Very high pitched. Let's see what it is. Got something here. 
Oh, look at that. It's a shell case and a small one. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wow, it's... Well, this is not just your standard 9mm round. This is a 45 ACP uh, shell casing, American. Uh, this thing was fired by uh, the uh, Colt 1911 pistol and the uh, Thompson submachine gun. Cool, it's marked with 42, 1942. And right when I was about to pick up my detector and walk off, there's more in the hole. And actually, you can see it already over there. I don't recognize it immediately, but it seems a bit of a bigger object. Th there is some movement in there. Let me get my close-up camera. There you go. See that over there? This does look like a magazine, guys. <laughs> look at that. Well, yes. Oh my god, you are you kidding me? So we just found a cold pistol round and this magazine definitely belongs to that. This is a, I think this is a cold pistol magazine. And as you can see, there's no more rounds in it. It's an, uh, it's an empty magazine. And there you go. Yeah, I'm quite sure that this is from the uh, Colt pistol, Colt 1911. Look at that. The Colt 1911, also known as the M1911 or Colt Government, served as the standard issue sidearm for the US Army from 1911 to 1985. It's a semi-automatic, magazine-fed, recoil-operated pistol firing a 45 ACP cartridge. The US Army purchased around 2.7 million pieces in total during the pistol service life. The Colt 1911 was widely used in World War I, World War II, the Korean War and the Vietnam War. And this is a German shell casing, but it's not just a shell casing. You can see the remains of a wooden tip here. This part here. So that means that it is a practice round, a Mauser K98K practice round. And well, I can tell you, you don't find those often. So that is actually a really special find. So they've done some practice shooting here. Rob just pointed out quite a funny surface find. And uh, yeah, it's clear that we are not the first ones here. Um, I even see some modern trash in there. It's a pity that people leave it behind like this. But I thought that this would be a really cool find to point out to you because this is an American cable reel and uh, I think for telephone wire and the actual wire is still around this thing. Look at that guys. That is a really cool find and I can tell you that is really, really heavy. We're about an hour further and I found something that I've never found before. And you can see it over there. Look at that, we found more evidence of the uh, American activity in this area and uh, <laughs> well, look at that, it's, it, it already says US and uh, I believe that this is a, it's an American uh, a pin, like a rank insignia. Here, look at this, the pin is even, both pins are even still there on the back and <laughs> maybe, maybe Rob wants to help us uh, with the brush and let's see if we can uh, make it nice and shiny again. That it's is probably a color tab. A color tab yeah. to indicate the rank or something. I think so, yeah. Look at that original shine. <laughs> it's golden plated. Gold plated, wow. Look at that, guys. <laughs> well, I don't find American stuff a lot, to be honest. Usually, mostly we find German stuff, so to be finding any American stuff is, is, is quite cool, I think. But <laughs> this, <laughs> this is something different. If that is not a pretty image, then I don't know what is. Okay, so there was actually a second signal there, guys. So I think we should be onto it here somewhere. What is that? Is that a coin? No, looks like a button. This thing also says US. Jesus, man, is, was that a, was that a set with the with the with that US pin that we just found, that rank pin? It's not our color tab. It's, <laughs> it's not a button. It, it's not a button? No, no, no. It's too big. <laughs> wow, okay, this day has all of a sudden turned into a very good one. That has been silent uh, for a while, signal-wise, I mean. I haven't found a lot this day, but this is definitely a game changer. Let's see if we can make this one as pretty as uh, that one. 
I think the condition is quite nice in this one as well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Wow, man, look at that, guys. Two American uh, color tabs, rank insignia. The round color tab was worn by US Army enlisted men. The other one was worn by US Army officers in World War II. Today's a good day, I'm a happy man. Okay, I'm quite sure that we've just hit a small hotspot right here. You can see my stuff there, there are the US color tabs. I found those right there, and I actually had a signal right next to it. And you can see it over there, I already dug it out. That seems to be a key. And it's in a very nice condition, so there is probably gonna be some readable markings on there. Look at that. And there was Rob again to help me with the brush, lifesaver. I think I found these in the past as well, some years back, that, that brand Corbin. The Corbin Cabinet Lock Company was formed in 1882 in the USA and is still in business today. The day is almost past and uh, we've already found quite some coins today, but yet again we found another coin and actually this one is huge and in a very nice condition. You can see it here, I already brushed it up and it's an English penny from 1932 to be precise and I didn't know these these English pennies were so were so big. I haven't found these a lot to be honest. Yeah that makes me even more happy with this one. Very neat coin. We're gonna go home, had a lot of fun with uh, World War II Unknown and uh, Iron Mike metal detecting. I also want to say thank you to my patrons. Because of you we can keep doing what we love and that is metal detecting and excavating World War II history. Sharing it with the world and giving you that awesome experience as well. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.